Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to One Piece, episodes 696 to 699. No, sorry, 966 to 969. Uh, I, I, I knew, I, I, I realized as I was saying that I was completely wrong. I'm like, wait, no, 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 that's wrong. And it's like, no, it's 966 to 969. Um, and this is it. This is the last four episode reaction we have for this series. Because after these four episodes, there's only two more episodes in order to catch up. Or there will be two more episodes by next week. So next week's will only be a two episode video. And then after that, it's one episode per video going forward. We're here. <laughs> this is it. And it's, it's getting me emotional because I haven't been caught up in this, with this series for years, for a long ass time. And I've already talked to you guys about it. I've mentioned plenty of times this is my favorite series. And so to finally be caught up again, it's exciting to get to see these episodes as they air. And yeah, the manga is still ahead and the manga is still ongoing and stuff. But still, to see the episodes of the series as they air is still going to be a big deal. It's, it's fantastic to have finally caught up after all this time. I love this series and I'm sad that we're going to be caught up, that we're going to only be doing two episodes next week and then one episode a week from then on. But I'm excited as well to be at that point. So, yeah. This is, this is pretty, pretty exciting, pretty fun. But we still have this final set of four episodes to get through before we can even talk about Cat being fully caught up and everything. So we're still kind of in the flashbacks, still with Whitebeard and Odin as they're along in their travels. We see that um, Orochi has taken over with the help of his uh, transforming uh, friend, um, or maybe um, family member. It's unclear still at this point if she's a member of the clan as well. Um, but yeah, I, I, what I, it is confirmed. I, I, I have it confirmed now that it is definitely the same devil fruit power as Bentham, as Bon Clay, Mr. Two, whatever you want to call him. Um, and apparently, uh, like, it might have just been an animation thing, like the animators, like, forgot to show her touching her face or something. But I don't know, that feels like that would be a really weird animation mistake to make. Because um, that, that, that is literally how the devil fruit works. Like, that, that's literally just how it works. So I'm, I'm kind of wondering, like, if the manga shows her touching her face. Because if not, then Oda might have forgotten. <laughs> or it might have just been a mistake even on his part. Uh, maybe we'll see. Maybe, maybe it'll change. Maybe we'll end up seeing her start touching her face now. Um, we'll have to see. But, yeah, they've, they're kind of taking over um, while Odin is gone, gone. And they've been lying and everything to try and make it seem like 
Orochi and Odin are close so that Orochi can usurp power and everything. Um, but Odin, meanwhile, has found uh, his love, Toki, while on his journey, and they have had their children out at sea on Whitebeard's ship as well. And at the end, we saw them come upon an island that Roger and his crew were on. So the meeting of the Titans, the king of the pirates and the strongest pirate to ever live. It's like, these are the two of the biggest names in this series by far. Roger for obvious reasons. And Whitebeard, like his presence is still felt in the modern day era. And not just because of that stupid weevil dude. Uh, his death at Marine Ford was such a massive thing. His presence at Marine Ford was so massive. And it's wild to see just more of his history. Just getting to have more context behind him as a character. I love it. Um, but we're not done yet. Like I said, we still got the rest of these episodes to go. We've already seen how Teach has joined the crew. We've seen other characters who were in Marine Ford and everything. Um, and it's really interesting. Because we're getting to see how all these different characters who we've met before joined in with Whitebeard and eventually how they got to Marine Ford to fight with him or even just as allies who used to be crew members. So, yeah, it's just a really great concept that Oda brought in here uh, to just have during Wano. And it makes Wano more important, too. Not just as an arc, but as a country. And it's just like its lore is steeped in so much that has happened in this world. So many big, important events and characters. So it's going to be exciting to see how all of it ends in the modern day and how Luffy and them liberate and open the borders of Wano. So we're going to get into this. We have four episodes for the final time, unless something happens and I have to take some weeks off of reacting to the series, which is probably not going to happen <coughs> to the point where I would get to four episodes again. But most likely for the final time, for a, a, the final time for four episodes, let's get this going. When the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episodes. So, that being said... Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. What a fucking way to end off with our final four-episode reaction. We, we see how Odin changed crews at the end. Leaving with Roger to find the final island on the Grand Line. And throughout these final final journeys, this last year, going through the Grand Line, they got to meet many faces that are very familiar to us. They got to go through many adventures to places very familiar to us as viewers. And in the end, they made it. Roger and his crew, save for Shanks and Buggy, due to Buggy's sickness, and finally made it to the last island on the Grand Line. 
the island that could only be found by reading the road poneglyphs. And upon seeing the treasure that would become known as the One Piece, <laughs> they laughed. They laughed. Roger chose to call it the island in honor of Joy Boy, Laugh Tale. <sighs> These episodes, God, they hit me hard. They're hitting me hard even just thinking back on them right now. We got to see the final year of Roger's adventure. The final year that led up to his execution, where he became the King of the Pirates, where he disbanded his crew, where he truly set in motion what would start the Great Pirate Era. This was such an important flashback to this series. Is at the very beginning, very beginning of this show, or the manga, whichever you go with. I, I, I don't know how it was done in the manga, so maybe not. <laughs> But the very beginning, we're told that the King of the Pirates, Old Roger, on his dying word, challenged pirates all around the world to find the One Piece, starting off the Great Pirate Era and our story. It was the literal catalyst for everything we've seen in this series. And now, over 900 episodes later, we see how it happened. We have the context. Roger is no longer this mythical figure in this series. He is no longer just this legendary king of the pirates. He's a person who laughs and has fun, who dances and drinks and plays with babies. You can see Luffy so much in him. The joy, the spirit of adventure, the will of D is very much present. And it's sad that it's coming to a close. As we return to focus on Odin specifically, as he goes out for revenge on the bastards who attacked his family. We know where this is going. We know what happens. And it doesn't end well. And so we're seeing as well, things had been left unsaid. Things had been left just completely unresolved. After his journey with Roger, Odin, it's seeming like never met with Whitebeard again, his born brother. And it's sad. But what this does for the series, the amount of depth, the amount of 
development and world building and character building that these flashbacks have shown during these, what has it been, 12 episodes now? Has these flashbacks have been just so important and it just astounds me. I, I can't help but continue to be absolutely flabbergasted at Oda's writing. Like you look back on many of the arcs from this series and, and you see things talked about or mentioned that end up coming up much later and it's like oh yeah that's really awesome that's really badass how much forethought Oda puts into this series how much build-up he gives to certain specific moments and arcs and characters and locations it's so astoundingly good excuse me But it just keeps getting better. Every time, every time you thought you think you've reached the pinnacle of Oda's world building and character uh, development and just forethought into these arcs and characters and series, you get stuff like these episodes. And it just shakes the entire foundation of what this show is. We see that Frankie was there when the Oro, Oro Jackson docked back at Water 7 for repairs. We got to see them meet Gonfall in Skypea. We got to see them fight with the locals of Mock Town. And this series just, it just truly proves itself to be something special every time something like this happens. Like, what other show lasting even anywhere close to long like this. What other long form shonen anime have you seen that has this level of storytelling, this level of development, this level of world building? Naruto sure as fuck doesn't. Bleach sure as fuck doesn't. Yu Yu Hakusho, Dragon Ball Z, like Hunter Hunter is pretty damn good with it, but even so, not anywhere near this level. There's certain things that all of these shows have been good at, and, and there's certain things that make them good to some degree, that make them special to some degree, and that makes all these fans around the world love them so much. Whether you do or not, whether I do or not, whether someone else does or not, they, they are beloved sh shows. They are beloved manga. They are beloved by so many people out there. But there's a reason why One Piece trumps them, why One Piece is so high on this list of just anime and manga. One Piece is a cultural phenomenon. Like, I've heard about how people have gone to Japan, and it's literally everywhere. In shops, there's statues and shit. It is everywhere. And it's become so popular world around, too. One of the highest-selling comic books, period. Only beaten out by Batman and Superman. And very possibly on its way, depending on how much longer it goes, to surpassing them. <sighs> the, 
there's a reason why this series is so popular world round. It's not just because of the characters themselves or the specific stories and the specific uh, arcs and whatnot. It's how all of it connects. It's how 900 episodes into this, or even 900 chapters, however long it took uh, equatable to the uh, episodes of the anime, you're seeing things that are literally payoffs to the very beginning of this series. You're seeing payoffs, not just from arcs away, but from for the entire fucking series at once. And yet it still perfectly fits into the current arc. It doesn't feel like this unnatural, overly bloated thing. It's, it's a part of this current arc. It's just backstory giving us information on a character important to the, to the story currently going on. And now, now we're getting to see what the series is truly shaping up to end as. We know there's not going to be too much left. We know that Oda does have plans to finish this within the next five years or so, though that will probably end up not being exactly that. And we can see the kind of directions it's starting to head in. And honestly, I'm not ready. As much as I would love to be, as much as I would love to say I am, I'm not. I'm not ready for this series to reach those epic conclusions. For these big things that have been foreshadowed and built up from the beginning to continue to come to a head. Like, fuck, when we meet Shanks again? Like, when Luffy meets Shanks again? That's going to be such a big deal. When we finally have our crew land on Elbath, and Usopp gets to show how far he's come and be a brave warrior of the sea with the giants, it's going to be so, so good. When they reach Laugh Tale. Because you know it's going to happen. It's going to be something special. These episodes here not only just give us backstory on Odin, not only just give us backstory on Roger and Whitebeard and give us a lot of depth into this series based on stuff that we've heard about since the very first moments that this series began. But these episodes, these flashbacks, I truly believe are giving us a glimpse into the future, what we can expect for the end of Luffy and the Straw Hat Crew's journey. Like I said, Luffy is kind of the spitting image of Roger. They're not just, they're not just alike. Luffy's practically a reincarnated Roger in terms of personality. Maybe Roger was a little more uh, there half of the time. Luffy, you know, he can be pretty... Uh, ridiculous to an unhealthy point sometimes but they're very very much the same and so i think seeing roger here and seeing his journeys and seeing 
how he's gone through all of this and how he reacted when finding the treasure on, on Laugh Tale. I think we're seeing the future for Luffy and the crew. Seeing how they're going to react. I would not be surprised at all if this series ended with the Straw Hat crew standing on Laugh Tale, looking at the One Piece and laughing, laughing so hard they cry, thinking back on all of their journeys, all their adventures all the battles that it took to get to that point, and just laughing. Because they lived free. They lived a life of true freedom and spirited adventure. I would not be surprised if this series ends off on that note. I'm not saying it's going to. I'm not even saying that I'm any high percentage sure that it will, I just would not be surprised. And I wouldn't be disappointed if that is the shot, the single shot that this series ended on, I would be pleased. I would be satisfied. Because as we've seen plenty of times in this series, History has a funny way of repeating itself. And the will of D still needs to be carried out. The one prophesied to be even greater than Roger is here. And he's ready to take his spot as King of the Pirates. This series, I say it plenty, is special. I've been watching this series for so long, a good portion of my life. Hell, it, at this point, if I did the math, I'd probably be uh, finding out that it's most of my life I've been watching it to some degree, even if it was just the four kids dub at first. And now, again, over 900 episodes in, almost a thousand. And it's still impressing me. For a series to still impress you by 20 episodes in, it's something special. But not over 900 episodes in to still continuously impress? That's unheard of. So, I really do think that this series will more than likely never be dethroned as my favorite. I'm almost 100% sure of that. But at the same time, as always, I would love for it to be dethroned as my favorite. Because I would, at this point, that would be so fucking impressive if something actually ended up making me like it more. If some series actually was so good that I liked it more than One Piece at this point, that would be that would be insurmountably impressive but i don't think it's going to happen it's it's just amazing and i can't wait to see 
how these flashbacks end and how it comes back into the current day. And like I've said, we're at the end of our four episode a week reactions. This was it. Next week we do two episodes and after that we're caught up one episode a week. And again, I'm good with this. I'm okay with this because despite it definitely gonna be taking, or definitely gonna be getting, it's gonna take some getting used to, to adjust to only doing one episode a week instead of four, but it's also gonna free up a shit ton of time, honestly. And it's honestly going to make it be that much more exciting. I've said, it, I've said in the past that I don't like marathoning shows most of the time, with only a few exceptions here and there, because the weight between episodes, to me, is important. It allows you to build upon what you just saw so that when resolution comes in the next episode, it makes a bigger impact. And so that's the exciting part about going to one episode a week. Despite it definitely going to be hard to adjust to, it's going to be worth it. And I can't wait to see where it goes. So that being said, thank you all. Thank you all so much for continuing to tune in and support the channel and these reactions. And for the final time with a four episode reaction, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.